to uh, shoot this video for prospects that want to potentially work with Data Engineer Academy. And it's a slightly different video than usual. Usually I like to give value uh, to you know tech professionals, maybe people not working in tech that want to enter the data space as a data analyst, as a data engineer, as a cloud engineer. And today, instead of giving you value, I wanted to just kind of talk about Data Engineer Academy and talk about myself a little bit because I obviously was an engineer for like a decade, both in college and outside of college. I was a data engineer for Amazon, Lyft, startups, angel investors, some data companies myself. But obviously what I've been doing the last three years is building Data Engineer Academy. And so, you know, I've kind of, I've kind of gone from like a engineer identity to a business owner identity. At the same time, I want to give you an insight as to how I've built my company, just so that you guys understand who you're working with when you work with Data Engineer Academy. Because I know there's a lot of courses out there on Coursera or Reddit and, and hey, here's my $10 book or something. And, and that's fine and all. But, you know, we, we've kind of taken the strategy of like, hey, if people are learning something out there, you know, learning is one thing. Transformation is another. There's just no shortage of education, right? Like, I, like information is, is free. You can go on chat to BT and learn a ton of things, but just because you're learning something doesn't mean you actually get the transformation or the way we look at it is like actually get a higher paying job, right? Which is how we measure like our ultimate metric of, Hey, did we succeed with this student? And so I want to, I want to give you a life cycle of data engineer Academy, if you will. And hopefully this resonates with both business owners, but then also people who are just working in tech and want to, want to kind of see my journey and see what you know, what we've been able to build. Cause we've been able to build a, a, you know, $20 million a year business. It started in 2022 when I've decided to just kind of go on Reddit in order to, uh, learn a few things for my data job at Lyft, right? You know, I was trying to solve a problem for Lyft and, and I was doing some research and, um, I started seeing like, there are a lot of people really confused about the data role. They're asking all these questions, but a, they were asking the wrong questions and B, the way people were answering these questions was like the wrong answer to the wrong question. And I was like, this is not how you get a data role, right? I knew that when I interviewed at Lyft, like the recruiters didn't have time to look at GitHub portfolios and they didn't even care. They didn't have the tech background. And so I just knew that wasn't true. And I started giving some free advice on Reddit and they loved it. They absolutely loved it. Um, and you know, I, I just said to myself, oh, I wonder if I wrote a book, if I can make some money off of it. And so I like wrote this book, uh, sold it for like anywhere between five and $50 and people loved it. And I started getting some messages both in the DMs and in my email, like, hey, can I pay you for, uh, for some mentorship to basically help me get a job? And I said, okay. I said like the largest number I, I, I knew I could, which was like three grand at the time. And somebody said, yes, can I pay it over two months? And I was like, perfect. And they did it. And it was like, whoa, that was very surprising. And I think in that moment, what I remembered was that in college, I had bought a, a course from a guy who was teaching data science. He used to be a data scientist at Airbnb. And so he helped me get data science skills. Uh, I knew some data analytics. I studied machine learning while in college and I was able to get a job at Amazon right out of college. And I remember thinking to myself, okay, I paid that guy like $2,000 and I never got on a phone call with him. I never connected with him on zoom. I literally just emailed him. We went a few times back and forth and you know, boom. I was like, yeah, this makes sense. Like I'm going to get so much value out of this course or whatever, this book, this one-on-one -on -one mentorship, whatever you want to call it at the time. And I think I learned more from that experience than I did from my time at college. And again, it's hard to say like, Hey, that's why I got hired at Amazon. But like, <clears throat> truth be told, like they hired me for a data analyst role and I had data science stuff on my resume. I think they were impressed. And so what was crazy about that is that I had taken out $2,000 in credit card debt, sent it to him. And I was like, cool, like we'll figure it out. And it landed me a great job and, and you know, the rest is history. But the reason I, I bring that up is because when I started charging three grand, I had no limiting belief that it was worth it because I knew that education and more importantly, transformation, right? 
meaning not just somebody who, who paid, but somebody who actually got the result from that payment, it, it could be life-changing. It could be absolutely life-changing. When I charged those $3,000 and I started getting my first few customers, I saw that those customers didn't really pay attention. And this is, you, this is when I started talking to other mentors of mine and they're like, oh yeah, that's normal. That's normal in the info space. And I was like, well, what do you mean? And he's like, yeah, like the more somebody pays, the more they care, the better the customer basically. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, well, that makes sense. I, I've paid, I paid a lot of money for different things. And, and what's funny is the, the, the more, you know, not to, not to justify my prices, I, I, th I think we're still underpriced TBH. Um, but the more I've charged, the better our customers have become because they know that it's up to them to get the result. But if they get the result, then, you know, that's why college charges 70 grand a year because it's supposed to be life changing. And it's supposed to be affect, affect your life for the next 20, 30, 40 years of your career. And fast forward, you know, we, we I, I was selling this book. I started charging three grand. I started raising my price and I started, um, you know, hiring, hiring team members and hiring engineers, customer success managers, salespeople. It's very interesting because what I started realizing about this audience uh, were some of like the smartest and dumbest people at the same time. And what I mean by that is like, we pride ourselves on being so analytical, right? And so logical and so smart, quote unquote, right? And like we are, but we're also a lot more emotional than we realize. Right. So if, if, if we're sitting down and we're trying to like dissect the business and look at stats and look at analytics, like we're good at that. Like that's where we live. If we need to figure out how to build a, a pipeline or a data warehouse or a dashboard or whatever in order to uh, solve this business problem, it's like, cool, like let us get to work. I think we can handle it. And then when it comes to making logical decisions for ourselves, what I found was that we're often very, very bad at that. And again, it goes back to like the good old, you know, philosophical sayings of like, know thyself, right? Rule number one is know thyself. Do you truly understand how you operate at an unconscious level? What I quickly start to realize is that people, yes, they need to learn the tech skills, right? You guys need to learn how to do data engineering. If you want to be a data engineer, there's no way around that. But the bigger thing I've realized is that it's just, it's just a lot of limiting beliefs. What are some things I think to be true in today's world or in my own world that maybe aren't universally true, right? It's kind of like when you go to a different country and you're like, huh, they do that. That's interesting. I, I, now I'm wondering why America does it this way. Huh? You know, we never question why we believe what we believe. And so as we started doing that and I started building my sales team, I made the purpose, this purposeful decision of like, okay, I'm going to train salespeople on how to help engineers get more clarity on their career, as opposed to get more engineers to become salespeople. And they understand that the blocker isn't your SQL skills. It might be from a job getting perspective, but the bigger blocker is people's mindset, right? It's people believing, oh, there's no way someone's getting paid 200 grand a year. Oh, there's no way I can do it. Oh, I don't have enough time, even though everybody has the same 24 hours of the day. Oh, I'm not smart enough. Don't work hard enough. There's no way Data Engineer Academy can help me because I'm a special snowflake. And they're, you know, even though they've talked to 100,000 people, they've never met somebody like me. It's like, we've talked to somebody like you. I can promise you that. We've talked to people making three million a year. We've talked to people making thirty grand a year. We've we've helped everyone in between, right? We've talked to people who've built a business, people who've destroyed a business, people who are just working for a business. We've, bought, we've talked to people in Canada, London, EU, US, India, right? And so, the the reason I bring that up is because you know, as a business owner, you start to really understand your prospect and your avatar. And again, I can talk to you guys about you know why you probably are looking at this video in the first place and thinking to yourself, hey. Why, why, you know, why, why am I thinking about working with Data Engineer Academy? I already know the 20,000 reasons you might be thinking about it. You're bored at work. You don't get paid enough. Your manager doesn't like you. Uh, your manager doesn't understand the tech parts. You feel undervalued. You feel underpaid. You feel undermotivated. You're going to work and doing the same thing over and over and over again. You're uh, not learning new tools. You feel like you're falling behind. You're wondering why John and Sally are learning these tools. You're wondering why John and Sally are getting paid two, three times more than you, even though 
you know like 70% of what they know. You're wondering how you can work remotely. You're wondering how you can see your kids more. You're wondering how you can make more so your loved ones respect you more. You're wondering how you get a little more status. You're wondering how you can work with the tools that give you status. You're wondering if AI is going to take over your job. You're wondering if AI is going to make it so that you can never get hired again and, and you have no idea how to interview because maybe you haven't been interviewed in three, five, ten years. You don't know if you feel confident in the interview. Maybe you're good at tech, but you're not good at the soft skills. Maybe you want some leadership skills. Maybe you don't know what kind of role you want. And if you went down the Reddit, YouTube uh, rabbit hole, you are literally like, holy crap, I'm more confused than ever. And I don't want to admit it to myself because I thought that a $5 Coursera course was the solution. And then it turned out to just add more confusion because everybody and their mother sells a $5 Coursera course. And so again, it goes back to like, well, do you want to buy a course or do you want to buy transformation? Because yeah, you can probably get a job and make what you're making now or a little bit less, but the point isn't to get your next job, it's to get a better job. And so that's why you're probably watching this video still, right? Keeping it real. And so the thing about that is once you understand your audience, then you can start to build a business and attract the people that you want, because we've also attracted the wrong person, right? We've attracted the people that, that, you know, thought that, Hey, like if I don't put in any effort, like I should still get my money back if I don't get a job. And it's like, that's not how it works. Harvard's not saying we're going to give your money back if you don't put in any effort. And so you know, it, and truth be told, it's one of the things that I fundamentally have, have struggled with as a business owner, because it's like, in one hand, I know that we can deliver. We've done it so many times because we will just educate you and then we will scale your applications to the point that you will get so many interviews. And what we realize is that, great, we can do everything on our side. But if you don't ace the interviews because you, you know, didn't actually prepare, you uh, got nervous on the interviews, whatever, then it's like, we can't control that variable. The less promises we make, the better customers we have, because the best customers realize that nothing in life is guaranteed and you have to work your ass off. And that's what we'll do too, right? Like if I bought a program like this, I'll tell you, I, I've bought many programs at this point. I, I have spent over half a million dollars in my alternative education. This is not college included. Um, and what I have learned is that you will get the output based on the input that you put in. It's really that simple. And so if I bought a 12 month program like this, I would try to finish this in like two months. I would try to get the quickest return on my investment possible. And so that's, what's been so interesting about building an ed tech company, because like we're not, I don't consider myself a biz op company or a info business or a course because a core, again, a course, like if I was selling a course, I would just go on Coursera, but I do consider us an ed tech company that, you know, specializes in the data space because that's that's where all of our instructors and myself come from. That's what we're good at, right? We have no interest in expanding to UX design and cybersecurity because that's just not what we do. Um, and so as I've built a business, I, you know, that's one thing that like really understanding your customer and what they need and being able to portray that and, and teach that to salespeople, right? I have a 50 person sales team, like that is so hard, right? And one of the things that we help prospects with is we help them optimize their resume so that you guys can portray to other companies, Hey, we've been able to make this business impact. And with this business impact, this is why you should hire me as an engineer because you, you know, you know, you will pay me 200 grand a year, but I will make you $2 million a year. So they're like, cool, let's do it. And so what I have learned from this experience as a founder is that that becomes more important than ever before, because that's what good companies look for. It's like, does this person understand their value, right? When I make a hiring decision as a business owner, it's like, cool. I, you know, as a startup, as still a relatively small startup, like I have to make sure that the, the money that comes out is going into a person that I think will be able to add tremendous value. And so being able to communicate that as an engineer has never been more important. I encourage you, if you're watching this and you're trying to land your next high paying data role, I encourage you to think in frameworks of exponential steps where it's like, okay, how do I become that person that takes the next leap? Well, I'll, I'll tell you like an annoying thing I always find. I always find when people come to me and they're like, hey, I, I did a quick Google search and they see the average salary is 150 grand. And it's like, cool. So what? Like, why are you talking to Data Engineer Academy if you want to make the average amount? Like, who cares? Right? Like the, the whole point of you booking a call and talking to us is that you want to be able to make more than the average. So be better than the average. That's a perfect example of like somebody is 
limited in their career, not because they don't have some, a certain tech tool, but because they are not thinking about this the right way. Like when you are going for a senior data engineer position, let's just say, you're competing. You're competing with everybody out there, all the other tech professionals, <laughs> my clients, right? Like you're competing. And so for you to say, yeah, but the average, who cares? Be better than the average, be better than the leader. Because like I said, 20% of my company drives 80% of my revenue. And so if that's true, and again, I'm not saying I don't appreciate the other, the other 80% of people, but if that's true, then you have to ask yourself, what does it take to actually be in the top 20% of people in your company? And it's probably a lot more work than, than what you're currently doing. You know, if, if you want me to get more in the weeds of specific things, put it in the comment, uh, because I always want to generate content ideas from what people are telling me. If you like this video, share, subscribe, do the whole thing. And, uh, cheers. I'll see you on the other side.